last month the national security agency released something interesting the cyber security guidelines for uc and voice network it's a 43 page document covering various facets of cyber security for unified communication and voice over voice over ip net it includes guidance on designing the network layer architecting the perimeter components like spc and gateway and session controllers like pbxs and call servers and even protecting the phone endpoints and software applications i have andrew and satyam here with me for a little chat to discuss the data Andrew, what do you think is the significance of these guidelines for, for the UC and VoIP codes? Thanks, Rikant. Digital security is an evolving collection of computer science, experience, and best practices. Communication security is even more complicated since there are so many different attack planes that need to be considered. We have the network, the edge devices, the call servers, session management, and endpoints. The beauty of the NSA report is that it covers all in great detail. You can almost think of it as a checklist of security requirements that enterprises can methodically apply. Now, I've been in this industry for a long time, and this might be the most comprehensive set of guidelines that have come my way. I've certainly seen documents that address each area individually, but nothing that approaches communication security in such a holistic manner. Yep. Personally, uh, I too am excited to see a major organization and address the security requirements of the UC and VoIP space. Uh, so, Andrew, what what is the audience to whom these guidelines are applicable? Well, my goodness, I can't imagine any audience that wouldn't benefit from this report, whether you are a small organization or a large organization, whether you're on-premise or hybrid or complete public cloud, no matter the size nor the deployment model, there are steps that enterprises can take to ensure that they are securing their communications the best that they can. Yep. So this essentially means, you know, uh, the security and UC ops teams in every organization need to come up with a plan to implement these guidelines. Now, a major segment of the guidelines goes into a lot of detail around the network topology of the UC and VoIP ecosystem. For example, creating separate VLANs for VoIP systems. And do you think companies are already following most of these guidelines? You know, while some of these guidelines are common sense to any network design, I found several that are less obvious. For example, companies have been providing separate VLANs for voice and data for years. However, there are some aspects of the report that might not be so obvious, like NTP, which is the network time protocol. It may not be obvious to a network administrator that UC and VoIP components need a dedicated NTP server that is not shared with the data network. This server should deny requests from anything other than UC and VoIP clients. Not providing this NTP server and properly securing it could easily lead to denial of service attacks. And the same is true for DHCP, which is the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. The report spells out a number of requirements placed on a DHCP server that are unique to UC. And as the case with all aspects of the report, it describes the problem along with the mediation steps. Interesting. So essentially, this means many organizations will now need to have a relook at their current UC and VoIP network and make changes to the network. Mm-hmm. Another major segment of the guidelines address the UC and VoIP components residing at the perimeter of the network, namely the session border controllers and the gateway. Satyam, over the years, you have had to handle many of these things. How thorough do you think these guidelines are? Well, I think the guidelines are quite comprehensive. So, if you look at the attacks which are mentioned in the guidelines, like eavesdropping on conversation, impersonating a user, or denial of service. The list is long, and it can go to an extent where an attacker can make the emergency first responder arrive at a wrong location. So it gives you a sense about what an attacker can do to your enterprise or the public services. And further down, uh, the guidelines also talks about the importance of monitoring your configuration frequently and also monitoring your logs at real time. It's interesting that the guidelines mention monitoring of the logs. Do they specify what exactly should be monitored at the perimeter too? Well, the details of what to look for in the logs and how to identify the attacks is not really covered as part of this guideline. At high level, it covers a lot, but the real meat is in the details of what to look for in the millions of log lines. 
right? So the lawyer holds the signature for each and every attack which is happening on your enterprise. And the signatures uh, keep changing, you know, it depends depending on the intent of the attacker. Uh, so it is paramount to monitor the logs as as the guidelines suggest. And as assertion, a lot of our customers perform automated scans to get their SBC's logs and configurations analyzed. And we have frequently detected imminent attack and mitigated it by tightening the configuration to block the attacker before they can reach the enterprise. And here we look, we usually look for common attack signatures uh, you know, on different SBCs, including attack originating from notorious organized criminal groups. So I think the best way to protect from them is to scan the configuration and analyze the log regularly, I mean, which is also recommended in the guidelines. So, so it is extremely important for organizations, I guess, to invest in tools that give them visibility into the kinds of threats they are encountering. Another major segment in the guidelines, and my favorite one, uh, talks about protecting major components inside the VoIP networks like the PBX and the session control. Andrew, how essential do you think it is for organizations to take steps to protect protect these internal components? Um, yeah, good question. You know, as as we all should know, an SPC is really your first line of defense in any communication system. It straddles the line between the public network and an enterprise's private network. You can think of it as a gatekeeper, and as such, it is where most of the UC attacks will take place. However, like any good security scheme, it's not enough to throw all your efforts at keeping the bad actors out. You must also build defenses inside the private network to deal with the cases where the hackers find a way in. And this involves securing session management servers, call servers, voicemail servers, etc. And this includes password management, setting administrative roles, Cryptographic, cryptographic key storage and regular audits and comprehensive logging. Not only do you need to keep the wolf out of the chicken coop, you need to train the chickens in self-defense for the case where the wolf breaks down the door. Yeah. In the security world, this is called defense in depth. Right? I have been involved in the automation of uh, cybersecurity controls at some major financial institutions using a session solution. Uh, it's sometimes quite shocking how open and vulnerable these systems can be to lateral attacks. I think it's mainly due to a certain amount of overconfidence in the security provided by perimeter systems like firewalls. I think the guidelines identify a good defense in depth strategy as essential to an organization, and I think everybody should uh, take it up. Uh -huh. One important segment of the guidelines deals with the physical phones, soft phones and clients running on general purpose operating systems. The general theme seems to be how organizations are moving away from traditional endpoints and the challenges that brings with it like encryption and software updates. Andrew, how significant do you think is endpoint security? Well, endpoint security is just as important as securing the backend communication services. As Srikanth just said, encryption and keeping software current is essential. Hackers love finding out-of-date software with known security holes. A truly secure system mandates software minimums and prohibits any client that falls short. It's also essential to enforce the requirements for TLS, which is secure signaling, and SRTP, which is secure media. Finally, the NSA guidelines address the physical aspects of a remote client. For example, disconnecting the microphone when on hook, replacing a handset with a push-to-talk handset, and removing speakerphone microphones. While these requirements may be dependent on where the remote client is located and the type of local, you know, remote client, they're worth understanding and, when necessary, implementing. That's quite interesting. Now, in general, these guidelines seem to be a great step in the right direction for protecting UC and VoIP systems. Uh, data networks, software platforms, and firewalls have had these kind of guidelines for a long time. Now. A general trend we have seen in those areas is to implement significant automation to enforce the cybersecurity. And do we see a similar trend emerging for UC and VoIP systems now that now these NSA guidelines? Absolutely. UC systems generate a lot of data in terms of configuration items and real-time session data. In many cases, or I should say in most cases, it is beyond the ability of the human brain to take everything in and make sense of it. And that is where automation, 
AI and monitoring come in. Machines can do what we cannot. Not only, not only can they look at millions of lines of log messages and make sense of them, they can correlate disparate messages together to discover patterns. Hacking isn't always obvious, and automated tools can understand what it has taken place or about to take place much faster than humans can. I agree. Automation, I think, is essential for cybersecurity and force. Thank you guys for this information to discussion. This was very insightful. Have a wonderful day. Thanks much. Thank you for having me.